for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Madden Cheese, as always. Got more Madden 23 ratings. These are the official Madden 23 ratings for defensive ends and outside linebackers. They call them edge rushers. At the end of the day, it's all the outside linebackers and all defensive ends, though. So even if you play in like a 4-3, it'll have you on this list, as far as I know. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm giving you guys my instant reaction as these ratings drop. They drop at 12 o'clock. I look at this list right away. I give you my, my instant reaction. I'll also give you guys the top rookies. I'll give you guys all the first round ratings. And I'll also go and I'll try to find the fastest uh, rated rookies because that's obviously important when it comes to uh, Madden. Matt, speed is the most important thing, so I always try to point that out. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button let me know in the comment section. If you disagree with some of the ratings like I do, let me know in the comment section as well. Other than that, let's go let's get right into the video. Now, starting off, you can see Miles Garrett is a 99 club member. Uh, that's, to me, somewhat warranted, but I question it when I look at who's number two when I see TJ Watt coming in at only a 96. Now, I realize this is because he's an outside linebacker and things like zone coverage come into play and stuff like that, which really drops his rating. But when TJ Watt has, I think, 15 career more sacks, he was drafted the same year as, T as, uh, as Miles Garrett, and TJ Watt has like 15 career more sacks. Uh, he has more stats in just about every single department. Uh, TJ Watt also, I think, tied the sack record for the uh, for a single season last year so it just begs the question like what does TJ Watt have to do other than play a different position other than play a traditional defensive end because this is kind of ridiculous to me every year I'm pretty sure that when I make this video I point this out why is TJ Watt not rated a 99 like I know like I said I know it's probably because of his man and his own and his coverage ratings and stuff like that things that don't come into play when it comes to a defensive end like Miles Garrett but at the end of the day TJ Watt tying the sack record last year. I know a lot of people were upset yesterday that Cooper Cup was only a 98 yesterday, and he had a monster year. But TJ Watt had an historic year, and he's only a 96. So I'm going to hear the same outrage in the comments for TJ Watt. I'm not even a TJ Watt fan. I'm not even a Steelers fan, none of that stuff. I just think it's kind of ridiculous that a guy is doing so much in this league. He's got 72 sacks in five years, while Miles Garrett has 58 sacks in five years. Why is TJ Watt not getting the love in the ratings department that he deserves? Moving down the line, Nick Bosa is number three i kind of agree with that i don't really know if he's uh done enough to overtake khalil mack but i know khalil mack's kind of dropped off a little bit same thing with von miller these are guys that a few years ago were like a lot closer to 99s they're dropping nick bose is rising i get it i'm not really mad about it uh maybe i'm a bigger fan of guys like von. i'm definitely a big fan of von miller guys coming off the super bowl year and he was really important in that run so to me he should be a little bit higher than khalil mack but no real complaints uh cameron jordan he's mr consistent he's like the guy every year they have guys like yesterday was Mike Evans and uh, Keenan Allen guys that are just so consistent but they don't really move at all Joey Bosa coming in at 91 as a left outside linebacker makes me question once again TJ Watt uh, Chandler Jones 90 I'm pretty sure these are the same ratings that they were uh, last year or in the same range and they changed positions so why didn't their ratings drop to a point where they're, I'm sure Chandler Jones and Joey Bosa don't really have great man or zone coverage uh, in the same vein. So, like I said, I'm still really questioning TJ Watt. I, I just feel like they're doing him dirty. Darius Leonard, uh, he, he's a guy that, once again, I mean, they're going edge rushers. Uh, I'm pretty sure Darius Leonard, I don't know if they're changing to a 3-4. I didn't know he was an outside linebacker. Um, I thought he was a middle linebacker. I'm not really sure, but he should be rated a lot higher. He's one of the biggest playmakers. He's the first guy that I would consider a non-edge rusher on this list. Uh, but he's a guy that I definitely think should be rated a lot higher. I mean, he's a turnover machine. He's one of the best. He might be the best linebacker in the game, like a pure off-the-ball linebacker. Uh, aside from like a pass rusher, Darius Lander might be the best in the game. He should definitely be higher. I would probably have him in the same range as Khalil Mack and Von Miller. I'd probably have him just behind Nick Bosa, like a 93. In my opinion, Darius Lander is deserving of that. Then Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence hasn't had a double-digit sack season or a Pro Bowl season, I think, since like 2019. I don't know why his rating is still so high. He's a good run defender. He's a good defensive end, but I don't think he deserves to be on this top list, especially compared to guys like Chan 
Chandler Jones, who I think has like some of the most sacks in the league since he's been in the league, one of the most productive defensive ends in the league. Uh, guys like Darius Leonard, like I said, I think might be the best linebacker in the league. I think Demarcus Lawrence is, is, is kind of overrated. He should probably be dropped a few more points. Moving on to the next list, we have uh, Rashawn Gary. I know that guy's been he's been having uh, you know a really good career, but that seems a bit high. I mean, I haven't really been following him, but I know his his he's been producing very well. I'd have to look at his stats though. I feel like that might be a little premature, uh, especially since he's ahead of Mika Parsons, who just took the lead by storm last year, only coming in at 88. But we know that EA doesn't really like to jump ratings too quickly off of one good year. This is actually probably the biggest ratings jump. I think yesterday we saw Jamar Chase uh, only jump to an 87 after a monster rookie year. That's kind of how it goes. They don't want to really, um, you know, if they were to give Mika Parsons a grade he probably deserves, it'd probably be closer to a 90. I think he should be on the first page, in my opinion. Uh, and Demarcus Lawrence should probably be an 88. They should have that flipped. But like I said, they really base these ratings off of like consistent performance. And he's just not really there uh, yet because he's only had one year. Daniel Hunter, um, you know, consistent player. Rokon Smith, very consistent player. Once again, I thought Rokon Smith was an inside linebacker. I don't know if he changed positions. I don't know what's going on in, in Chicago. But, um, yeah, this is pretty much the list. Shaquille Barrett. Uh, J.J. Watt on here. J.J. Watt's probably had the biggest drop. He's only an 87 now. He isn't really producing like he used to. I'm sure that speed's a little bit lower than he usually is, too. Still a good player. Still getting a lot of ratings love from uh, from Madden, but um, he's a guy who really hasn't put up the sack totals in a long time, at least not very consistently. Uh, Matthew Judon, I thought he was having like a defensive player of the year type uh, year last year. At least I was hearing stuff like that. Um, to see him in 87 uh, seems a little bit low. Max Crosby, 87, seems a little bit low. I'd probably have him higher, too. Uh, to me, he's one of the premier defensive Defensive ends in the league. Eric Armstead and Brian Burns rounds it out. Brian Burns might be one of the best ones because of that 89 speed. I'll go over some speed guys here in a minute. But let's go and let's take a look at the rookies. Now, first up, we got Trayvon Walker, who was the number one overall pick. I don't really think he was the best defensive end in the draft, but I think based off of scheme versatility is why Jacksonville won him. I think they're going to a 3-4. This is a guy I think that can play just about anywhere on a defense. Uh, and he really looks pretty good with the 76 overall and 88 speed, 92 acceleration. This guy is going to be a beast. Those two categories alone. To me, when it comes to pass rushers, speed and acceleration is probably the most important thing. 88 strength is pretty good, too. So this guy looks really good as a number one pick. Next up, we have uh, the number two overall pick, or I really thought would be the number one overall pick. That's Aiden Hutchinson. Once again, listed as an outside linebacker. I think he's going to play defensive end. I really don't know. A lot of these defenses, I don't know if Madden's on point with this. I thought that the the, the, the Lions were playing a traditional 4-3, but couldn't tell you. He's an 81 speed, which is you know pretty good. 89 acceleration, pretty good. 85 strength. All that stuff's good. He's a slightly higher grade, though. Like I said, I did think it was a better player than uh, you know the, the, the number one overall pick. Next up from the Giants, we have Kayvon Thibodeau. I thought Thibodeau would be the fastest guy out of all these top picks. He's only coming in A6 speed, but he's got 90 acceleration. Uh, he's a 75 overall. These things all look pretty good. I just remember through a lot of mock drafts, they said that he might be the number one pick for a long time, and uh, he fell in the draft quite a bit, but this is still a very good looking player. Next up, we got Jermaine Johnson. This is a guy who was being mocked as a top 10 pick for a while. He fell all the way to, I think, the 20s with the Jets. Uh, but he looks pretty good. I mean, 74 overall defensive end, 85 speed, 88 acceleration. All these things are nice. And then last but not least, uh, out of the first round picks that they have brought out, I mean, I tried to find some of the linebackers, defensive tackles. They're not out yet. But George Karloftis, coming in at a pretty respectable 80 speed. I didn't know this is a guy who's really known for his power. Uh, so seeing coming at 80 speed is pretty good. Another guy that had a high first round grade was David Ajabo. He went in the second round because he got injured, I think, in his, one of his workouts. But he looks pretty good. 87 speed, 90 acceleration. Strength isn't necessarily there. But this is a guy who's really known for his speed. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.